Hello everyone, welcome back to Garden Obsessed. My name is Carla, and it is the most wonderful time of the year. Um, if you've been with me for a little while, every year around this time of year, I have a video about a seed swap that I participate in. This is the only one that I participate in anymore. When I first was really getting into gardening, um, I signed up for every swap I could find. And um, that got a little overwhelming after a while. Um, you can accumulate way more seeds than you're ever gonna be able to grow when you do that. Um, I also found some really interesting things doing that though. I don't regret anything, it was awesome. But this is now the only swap that I participate in. It is, I think this was the 12th year for it. Um, I have participated in it at least six years, maybe seven. I can't quite remember which year was my first year. Um, it's Canadian and it's got a wait list. It's not advertised anywhere because there are wish lists that you can submit and it's a lot of work for the organizer to put this on. She um, requests everyone ahead of the swap to send in what their wish lists are for this year. And she does her best to fulfill as many wishes as she can. Um, I got a lot of my wishes answered. I got some really cool stuff and there's always surprises. And along with that wish list, you're also able to kind of say what you're not looking for. So um, I requested no herbs this year. There tends to be a lot of herbs that get sent in and I have a lot, like I'm full up on my herb seeds. So I did request no herbs this year um, and everything else is awesome. So let's look at what we got. I didn't really look up a lot of things, so I can't tell you a lot about some of these things. They're new to me. I haven't grown them before. A lot of these things I have grown before. Um, but anyway, so we'll start with, um, black beauty eggplant. So I kind of gave some shade to eggplant in one of my previous videos. And it's not because I don't love eggplant. I love eggplant, but I do not have great luck growing it. Um, I said I wasn't going to waste space on stuff that, um, I don't have great luck with or that our entire family doesn't enjoy. I am the only one that enjoys eggplant in our family, but I'm sure I can find a little space to tuck one of these guys in there. Um, Black Beauty, I have tried to grow before. <laughs> um, it's kind of like your classic eggplant, like a, a larger classic eggplant, basically. Um, so yeah, she'll probably make an appearance this year um, another thing that I asked for, um, I asked for some cabbages. I'm trying to find, like, I have sporadic success with cabbage and I want one that will grow well for me here, that will store, um, and that we enjoy to eat, you know. Um, so I did get, this is a called Blue's Napa F3. So I assume this is like a Napa cabbage. Um, and I love, like, this is why I love seed swaps, guys. Like, look how cute this little package is that someone put together and took the time to make. Um, and then I also got a Savoy cabbage. So that'll be fun to grow. What else do we have here? Some of this stuff is random. Some of it's, I've kind of placed it with like things like all the tomatoes are together and the beans are together and stuff like that but a lot this pile is kind of the random pile <laughs> like um so I got some lacinato dino kale I have grown this one before it's one we really like this is one I really like for kale chips because it doesn't have all of those ruffles which makes it really hard to lay flat on a pan like this one makes really good kale chips um this is cardoon. I've never grown cardoon before. I believe it's kind of related to artichokes, but can be grown in a colder climate. I could be wrong on that. You want to double check that information, but that's what I think currently without having looked it up. So that could potentially be a really fun thing to grow this year. Um, 
I got some cucamelon seeds. I am trying to overwinter some cucamelon tubers this year, but I'll probably start some of these as well because already about half of them have gone moldy. So unknown the status of those tubers. They may or may not make it till spring. We will have to find out together. Um, this is an early butternut squash. So that's awesome. Squash is something that I want to grow a lot more of this year. All of the squash and pumpkins that I had planted at home got eaten by the deer. So the only squashes we ended up with were, um, a couple of summer squashes and a couple of acorn and delicata um, varieties that were bush varieties that I grew in town at the community garden. Here comes Lola, prepare to shake. Okay. Um, anywho, so squash is on the list this year. Um, I also got a Paris Island cause lettuce. I have grown this one before. It's like a romaine type, so it's really good. It'll be awesome. Um, probably in the, um, why do I always forget the name of it? The grow tower. The green stock. That's what it is. Anyway, so we'll probably plant some of that in there. I got some cherry bell radishes. Those are like your classic little red ones. I've grown those before. We're not huge radish fans, but sometimes these are fun to grow because they'll like grow and mature quickly in the spring before you really have much else going on. And you know, they're okay roasted. I don't think it's life changing. They don't, we don't love them all of a sudden, but they're tolerable. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. Um, this is interesting. So Japanese wasabi radish. So I assume this is like a really spicy one that might be kind of fun to play with. So we will see, cause we do like, you know, spice. So, um, I have some categories here. I guess we'll do this one first because it's smaller. So one of the other things that I asked for were carrots. Carrots are one of those seeds that don't last very long, like along with, you know, onions and things like that. Um, like the seeds lose their viability quicker than some of the other seeds, like peppers and tomatoes and stuff. So carrots is typically on my wish list. Um, I got some Scarlet Nanties, have grown those before. They're one of my favorites. Lola's on the move again. So these will be grown. Um, we got some Danvers 126. I think I actually bought a package of these this year, forgetting that, you know, I had asked for carrots in the swap. Um, but I've grown the Danvers half long before and they're also a favorite. So these will definitely get planted. And then we have some red cord chantonay, red corded, cord, not cord, cord. Um, forgive my maritime accent. So I've not grown these before, so these will be fun to play with as well. I really, we had a crappy carrot year this year, but I do really enjoy growing carrots and they keep really well. And if they get used for no other reason, like even if they have bug damage and stuff, Lola loves carrots. So she gets them for treats. So carrots are definitely on the must grow list. Um, okay. I asked for interesting tomatoes and peppers. We'll get to those in a second. We'll get this big category done first, I think. So I asked for like cut flowers. So I got a handful of things here. I wasn't too specific. I have a lot of cut flowers, but there's so many varieties and stuff of things that like you don't really have to be too specific about what you do and don't want if you're just wanting to try things. So I got a zinnia called carousel. I've never grown this one. I think it's like a bicolor, like it's um, like pink and orange and the tips are darker or lighter or something like that. I, I think I've seen this one like in catalogs and stuff. I got some, I think it's, it says baptisma, but I think it's baptisia, which is false indigo. I could be wrong on that as well. Um, that's been on my wish list to grow for quite a few years. Um, this is Morning Glory Heavenly Blue. I have grown Morning Glories before. Um, I used to have a large planter that I had like a trellis in. And I used to grow them up that every year. It was like probably an eight foot trellis, 
but that trellis has been repurposed and the hardy kiwi is growing on it the last few years. So I don't have that trellis anymore. So I might have to find another spot for those to go because they are really pretty. This is Flamingo Feather Solotia. I usually don't have my game quite um, together to get Solotia to grow really well here. I know it can, um, but by the time, <laughs> like the vegetables take priority. And by the time I get to the cut flowers, a lot of time I'm like, eh, like die on the deck. I'm too tired to deal with you. So, you know, they may or may, I'm sure they'll get started. We'll have seedlings of them. Whether they get planted into the garden or not remains to be seen. Um, we have some Langsdorfi Nicotiana. Um, I haven't, haven't grown this one before. I've grown Nicotiana a couple of times, not this specific one. It looks like it's maybe a yellow or a green. You can see the photo there. Um, they're really pretty. This is Bellum Canda Lily. I have no idea what that is or what it looks like. I assume it's probably like a day lily of some kind, but I'm not quite not quite sure on that one. We've got some Red Spike Amaranth. I've grown that one before. I love that one, so that's awesome to have some more seeds of that. Lauren's Grape Poppy. I have not grown Lauren's Grape before. It is pretty, I've seen it before, so we'll probably definitely grow this one. And poppies are awesome because you can actually seed them like in the snow in February and they grow quite well that way. I've had good success growing them that way. Um, we've got some Cracker Jack marigolds. Marigolds are awesome. I'll be starting lots of marigolds, so it's nice to have those. This is a purple echinacea. That's always a popular choice. And then I have a couple of sweet peas. So this one is called Raspberry Twirl. I can say that one. And this one is called Matucana. Matucana. So I've got a couple little baggies of sweet peas. I love sweet peas. Um, there's some things fighting for space in the garden right now in my planning phase here. I think we definitely need to put in some more garden beds because I have visions of like tunnels of sweet peas, tunnels of dry beans, um, you know, sprawling mounds of like squash. And I have space to maybe pick one of those, you know, to meet the vision that's in my head. So I don't know exactly what's gonna happen, but I definitely want more sweet peas this year than I've ever grown before. I love sweet peas. They're one of my favorite things um, flower wise to grow. Just nothing compares to the scent of them. They're just like freaking amazing. So not quite sure. We'll definitely grow some of those though. Okay, let's move on to peppers. So I love growing peppers. I love experimenting with peppers. Um, so I got a blot pepper. I've grown these before. I don't remember. I don't think I grew any this year. Maybe one. I can't remember. Yeah, I think I did grow one, but I grew quite a few last year and they're like, they're just like a nice, you know, sweet bell pepper that are some, mine were mostly yellow with like purple streaks and things. I think they can be a lot of different colors. Um, this is called Cobra Hot Pepper. I know nothing about this one. Um, it has a cool name and says it's a hot pepper. So I like to grow hot peppers. So I don't know, we'll probably play around with this one or at least look it up and see, see um, you know, what's up with it. This is Doe Hill Pepper. I have grown this one before. Um, it's kind of like a squat, fat, really thick walled pepper, or if I'm recalling the correct one, which I think I am. And I think it was was it orange or was it red? I think it turned red when it was ripe. Um, and I remember it, you know, having decent flavor and stuff. Um, okay, this one is called Super Shepherd. It says it's a sweet bull's horn red pepper. So I don't have much experience growing those. So that's probably going to be a fun one to play with this year. 
Um, this is Bishop's Cap Multicolor Chili Pepper. I love the multicolor chili peppers. I did order seeds for a couple of them this year to be kind of like ornamental. So it might be fun to grow this one along with those and have like three different kinds. We'll try to grow and see which one um, is a winner. This one is a sweet pepper called Ruia, possibly Ruia. Um, I know nothing about this. I don't know if it's a bell pepper or I don't know. We'll have to look look that one up and see what's what. And then we got some Hungarian hot wax pepper seeds. So that's awesome. So these are, they're red because they're um, coated and that's fine. They're 2023 20, seeds. So sometimes coated seeds don't last as long. They have like a shorter lifespan than uncoated seeds, but these are nice and fresh. So we should have no problems with those. Okay, tomatoes. So, um, <clears throat> I was unfamiliar with a lot of these. There's a few that I'm familiar with. So the first one here is, and a lot of them are dwarf varieties because I did say I wanted to grow dwarf varieties this year. So they were on my wish list. So this is dwarf geranium kiss. Don't know what color it is. Don't know how big it gets. Um, a lot of the dwarfs are, I think they technically have to be three feet or under, but sometimes micro dwarfs get called dwarf tomatoes too, which would be like a pepper that's, I don't know what the official height requirement is for micro dwarfs, but they're like definitely less than a foot and a half. I think they might even be 12 inches or less. I can't remember now. Um, so I don't know if all of these are dwarf or if they're micro dwarf, whatever. I'm interested in both. Um, I wanted some things that I can grow in containers. Um, and they might be fun to start a few um, for the seed sale that we'll have as well. Because a lot of people are looking for things that they can grow in containers. Um, this is called Rebel Starfighter Prime Tomato. I don't know anything about this, but I think I grew... A tomato one time that was just called starfighter and i think it was just like a red tomato um i think it was indeterminate and i think it was a hybrid so i need to you know see if this is related um what it looks like you know i don't know which of these are you know i don't know sizes or anything of these so i definitely have to do some googling here this is a tomato called emerald city so i assume it's a green tomato <laughs> i know nothing else about it um, I have a hard time with green tomatoes. Not that I don't like the flavor of them, but it's hard to tell when they're ripe. <laughs> so you have to like, the only successful way I have had is, you know, to give them the feel test. And when they start to um, feel a little softer is when I harvest them. But a lot of times that time of year, like it's nice when you can visually just glance at a plant and see when they're ripe. So I don't know. We'll we'll probably give them a try, but I just don't know if it's if a green tomato is going to be a keeper in my garden or not. This one is called Orange Dream Micro Tomato, so I assume this is a micro dwarf, which is super exciting. Um, I grew like ten different micro dwarfs this year, I think, and I really like them. They grew really well in the green stock. <laughs> And I think in another video I said I was only going to grow lettuce and beans or something in it because they grew really well. Well, the micro dwarf tomatoes grew really well as well. So probably some of those will find their way in there as well. This is called Dwarf Adelaide Festival. Don't know anything about it. They wrote that it's open pollinated on here, but I don't know anything else about it. So that'll be fun to look up. This one, oh, this is from the Dwarf Tomato Project, which is pretty cool. Um, the name of it is, I'm not even going to try to say that. I will do such a horrible job on that. That's the name of it. I can't say that. Uh, Sunrise Bumblebee, I have grown before. This is like a cherry tomato. Um... It's, it's like a good one, a decent one. It's not my favorite. Um, I really like, you know, sweet orange 
cherry tomatoes like sun gold sun sugar Jarrett really likes a classic red cherry tomato sometimes my dad likes these weird ones like he really loves dancing with smurfs which is awesome because i got some more dancing with smurfs um cherry tomatoes so these are my dad's absolute favorite i grow these every year so it's always nice to have um some more seeds for those then we have early annie tomato I don't know anything about this. I'm guessing maybe that it's like a determinant tomato, kind of like a Scotia or a Celebrity Early Girl, something like that, but I could be wrong. And if that is the case, I'll definitely be growing that. Um, and then this one is called Jasmine Yellow Dwarf Tomato. So it'll be nice to have a yellow dwarf tomato, probably a patio type tomato, I'm not really sure. We'll have to do some more Googling. Okay. Now, the thing that I was most excited about is I'm kind of obsessed with beans this year, right? Or the last few years I've been obsessed with beans. So I requested dry beans and I got some dry beans. So a couple of these I have, or maybe just one. Um, so Mayflower bean I have grown before and it's really pretty it's kind of um pink and maroon almost and it's got kind of a squared off shape I don't know if you can see it or not um it's not like a long bean at all bean seed I guess um I don't really know what to do with them though so if anyone you know knows like how to cook these and eat these. Like, I love growing them. They're really a gorgeous bean. Um, I love playing with the beans. I think they're like little jewels in your hand. Like, I just, I freaking love beans. Anyway, so this was one I had never heard of. This is a wax bean. Um, it's called Uzice, U-Z-I-C-E, speckled wax bean. And I love looking at the beans. Like I like to see what they look like. So, um, I don't know. I just, I love a handful of beans, man. So these are black and white. Um, I don't know if they're yellow or green. If they're green, I'll probably be able to squeeze some in. Jared doesn't like yellow beans. He's a little odd, so. Um, if they're yellow, I'm sure my mom will like to grow them. She really likes yellow beans. Um, this is red swan bush bean. And it's nice to have bush beans as well as pole because the poles I'll try to grow at home, but the bush beans are nice for in at the community garden, um, where we're not allowed to have very many trellising type things. So those will probably go in the community garden. I got some black turtle beans. I didn't open these ones yet. I opened most of them so I could, I assume they're just black. Um, and I do have a black bean that I really like to grow now, which is black Valentine, but um, I wanna start growing a lot more of our dry beans and start eating a lot more dry beans. And Jarrett really likes black beans, so maybe we'll have to give both of these a try. Yeah, they... Uh, they're kind of a matte black, small black bean. Like, they're quite small. Hope you can see that. Um, not as large as the um, black valentine beans. And are these... I don't know if these are pole beans or bush beans, but... I plan to have lots of beans. So these ones are a pole bean. They're called skunk bean for obvious reasons when you start looking at them. Like, aren't they cool? Man, I love beans. So they're just like all different, you know, patterns and swirls of black and white together, mostly black with white streaks, much like a skunk. Um, so these will probably grow. I don't have anything like this. That's the other thing that I like to do. Like I'll grow them all together on the same trellis 
Um, you can get cross-pollination with beans, but you tend not to. So you can grow them fairly close together and have pretty um, good success with them not cross-pollinating. They, um, and when they do cross-pollinate, in my experience, you know, the seed will look different that year. It's not like something like a squash where the seeds all look the same and you don't know if it cross-pollinated. Like you can usually tell with beans. So I plant them all up in each other's spaces. Um, and because I do that, I like to plant beans that look very different from one another. So when I harvest them at the end of the year, I can tell what they are, but I don't know exactly what the bean situation is going to be this year, so we'll have to see. There will be a lot. This one was probably the one I was most excited about, and it's the last thing that I have to talk about, um, just because they're so gorgeous. It's called an Inca pea pole bean, so I definitely need to do some Googling. Um, but they're so pretty, and I know you're not going to be able to see the detail that I want you to be able to see. Like they're just, they're so pretty. They're, you know, mostly, they're like a white bean with like cranberry burgundy colors and also tan colors at the same time. Come on. I don't know if you can see the colors. They're just very cool. And they're kind of, um, they're like a different pattern than I've seen before. Like a lot of times the patterning doesn't go so um, directly across the bean like that. Like a lot of times it would be at the top, um, you know, up here where a lot of the color was and not like down, like it almost bisects the bean, if that makes sense. Like a lot of them are like that where there's like, a stripe that goes directly through the center of the bean. Anyway, and they're glossy and they're just like, they're just fun to hold. They're like little, little garden treasures. So, um, I would love to know if you guys have participated in swaps before. And I don't know if it's because I'm not looking for them anymore, but I feel like maybe they're kind of not as popular as they were five or six years ago. It seems like everyone was into seed swaps at that time. And maybe it's just because everyone, you know, has reached their seed limits like I have. But anyway, tell me your seed swap stories. I'd love to hear them. And I hope you find some treasures to grow this year too. I'm well into the garden planning. Um, we'll probably do a video on that fairly soon. And... Looking forward to the 2024 garden. I thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.